Okay, the last section, 8.4, Alternative Pathways for Photosynthesis. So we learned about RUBP, and we learned how RUBP, let me show you this one, I guess, how RUBP needs to hook up with CO2 in order to start this whole process. But sometimes RUBP in situations where there's not very much carbon dioxide, um, and even though it's supposed to bind with carbon dioxide, it sometimes will bind with oxygen when oxygen levels are really high. So why would oxygen levels be high and CO2 levels be low? Well, as remember we discussed the structure of the leaf and when it gets hot, what will happen is the leaves will close, the stomata will close, and all the CO2 gets used up, and the plant's doing a lot of photosynthesis, and it makes a lot of O2, and the RUVP gets a little confused and starts hooking up with oxygen instead of CO2. And so when that happens, that's really bad, and that's referred to as photorespiration. Photorespiration is like an amalgam of two words, photosynthesis and respiration. You gotta be one or the other. It doesn't work very well to be photorespiration because O2 is combining with RUVP instead of CO2. So normally what happens in a leaf cell, if we looked at a cross section of a leaf cell, RUVP is going to hook up with CO2 and do the Calvin cycle that we just learned. But if the CO2 levels are low, oxygen will start to hook up with RUVP and then it's not gonna do the Calvin cycle at all. So there are plants that have evolved ways to avoid um, what's called, that's photorespiration, okay? Photorespiration when oxygen hooks up with um, RUVP. So take a look at this picture. On the left, we have most plants, and this is when RUVP is risky. Um, along inside any of these plants, any of these chloroplasts could have issues with photorespiration. This is what's referred to as a C3 plant. Here's the vein that's running um, <clears throat> in the middle or somewhere inside that leaf. What I want you to look at, look at how different this C4 plant is. The vein is here, the cells right around the vein are called bundle sheath cells. So if you look at the size of the bundle sheath cells in the picture on the right, as opposed to the picture on the left, they're much larger. And what these plants are doing is they're only doing their light um, independent reaction, their Calvin cycle in this portion right here. And basically these mesophyll cells around here these mesophyll cells right here are forming um, a layer of insulation. And they're isolating so that the Calvin cycles are occurring inside of the bundle sheath cells and they're only getting exposed to one gas inside of there and that is carbon dioxide because it's getting escorted into those bundle sheath cells. So for them it looks a little bit different. Their bundle sheath cells are the only place that they're doing their Calvin cycle, and so CO2 is getting brought in there by a compound called PEP. And PEP is very faithful, it only hooks up with CO2, and it drops that CO2 off um, around the, um, the veins to the bundle sheath cells, and that's where they will do their um, Calvin cycles. Well, obviously this is gonna be greatly limited because there's fewer cells that are doing the Calvin cycle, but it must pay off for those types of plants because um, they're able to make the sugars that they need to do. So on your notes, this is photorespiration, not good for plants. You seek to avoid it. When it is hot, the stomata close to conserve water. CO2 levels decrease because they get used up, because there's not a way for CO2 to get into the interior of the leaf. So number three, oxygen builds up in the interior of the leaf and competes, and competes with CO2 for RUBP. This is an inefficient process called photorespiration. 
So um, C4 plants, um, an adaptation to avoid photorespiration is a partition in space. The Calvin cycle reactions are isolated within the leaf. An alternative molecule, PEP, is used to initially fix the CO2, which will not bind to oxygen. And it costs energy, but it's advantageous in hot, dry climates. Another strategy, still using PEP, are called CAM plants. And what CAM plants do is in, at night, they, they can't do the light reaction, but they store up a bunch of CO2 with PEP. So all night long in the cool of the night, they're storing CO2, storing CO2, storing CO2. So in the daytime, when their stomata are closed to conserve water, the PEP releases the CO2 and the plants can go about their business of doing a light reaction followed by a light um, independent reaction. So CAM photosynthesis is an adaptation to avoid photorespiration and it's a partition in time. You fix CO2 at night to PEP when stomata can afford to be open. You release the CO2 during the day once the light dependent reaction begins. Photosynthesis is minimal, but it allows CAM plants to live with their stomata closed during the day. All right, my friends, I know that was a lot of information today, but when I see you next time, we will review all of this. Okay, I'm already proud of you.